So I've made the mistake of not having the underhook. So, so my arm, this arm wants to be here, it wants to be here, but it's got stuff on this side. And he's got hip and elbow. Usually they've just kind of passed to this position and I want my underhook back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the setup. So my feet go to the, shuffle around a bit. So my feet go to point to the corners of the wall. My pelvis is tilting, it's bringing forward. I'm gonna go up, I'm up all the way. And I, once I got my hips never come back down and I'm gonna try and roll up onto this top shoulder here. And what will usually happen is you know, my hips will drop and they'll start trying to put weight back on me. And when he does, I'm going to find him. If he stays down like he is actually, I'm going to go to the guard. And that's how you ended up getting triangle just now. He's, he's done what you did. But if he tries to come up the body, so I either get guard, a triangle, whatever, triangle's just guard. I either get guard or I get my underhook back. So, kind of one more time. I've ended up, I, want, I always want this arm here, under this gap, for now. We're going to assume that for now, but sometimes it gets stuck. And so I want it back, because he knows really, I have no real effective bridge here, not really. There's no effective bridge, because I don't have the arm to finish the move. So, you know, unless his posture's terrible, he's just going to ride this very heavy on my hips. So it's going to be one, one go to try and get this arm back to the other side, but I threaten the closed guard. Yeah, and so this time he's blocked it, and look what happens. It opens the space back up. So now he's gonna have to re-pummel, and now I'm gonna sit out again, and I'm gonna start giving him dilemmas between the underhook and the sit out. Underhook and sit out. Which is really what, Rather than it being the threat of the underhook with the bridge, it's now just the threat I'm going to take the underhook back. If he comes up the body, he on the set out, he generally feeds my underhook. So he makes my underhook more and more effective. If he stays down, he risks first close guard, second triangle. Depending on how belligerent he is wanting to stay down. And the skill is just try and feel in real time what his intention is so I do almost the complete opposite I don't want to ever fight him or be like oh my underhook feels heavy it's like that's the sign that the underhook's not the move it's, it's the sit out we're going to go the other way and then we're going to feel does he come with us or does he sit he sits close guard triangles we're going to keep climbing until he starts moving up comes back up the body, even in the closed guard. When he, he starts coming up the body in closed guard, he starts feeding the underhook in the closed guard, which is, again, putting the hands to the mat, chopping the legs, taking the back. Oh, that's going away, and you're right, sat back on, on your underhook. <laughs> from, from top, from... Yeah. From my ankle. Right. Right. Yeah, I was just, when you, when you were mounting there, I was just trying to spread my legs as wide as possible in, in, in the kind of like, um, it's kind of like an extreme set out and my spine. So it, make, it makes it very hard for you to finish the mount. I really was scared. Yeah, it is kind of, because every time you come up the body, you're getting rocked side to side. And so the hook was getting deeper all the way up. Yeah, try, yeah, I would end up going to the leg, I think. But that, it's the same game, you're right, it's, I don't even think of that, it's, it's exactly the same game. Even from mount bottom, if you start getting an arm under his leg, you've obviously got to be mindful of triangles, but it's the same idea. You're sitting out to get under. I've got the clip of that, which I'll have, I'll have a video of that. Well, I didn't even realise that, yeah, you're right. It's absolutely identical. I don't know if everyone knows what he's talking about. But what happened was he, he basically had me a mount. This is probably the best angle maybe. And what I was doing was I was just splitting, this is Henry's sort of stuff, I was splitting my legs and turning my chin in and trying to basically lock my spine. So it's uncomfortable if he cross faces, but as he does, I start, yeah, I start coming under here. 
which is the same thing. I'm just underhooking between his legs. I have to be super mindful of triangles, but I was all right that time. You just got to keep this in. If you, if you go, this comes through. This is, it's going to be this movement again because I can't afford to get that all here. Any questions or anything on the, any of that? So that's how we think about the guard now. If I can constantly threaten the underhook and every time I go to get one, he counters it, makes my underhook feel shitty, I just recover on the other side. So I'm never fighting him, really. Oh, you want the underhook? Okay, I'll sit out. You want to sit out? Are we? I'm, okay, I'm, no problem, I'm gonna go back to the underhook. Try to put my hand to the mat over the top of it. And threaten the back. So he's constantly, you know, threat, 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 threat. And never really directly, uh, never really directly taking them on. You give them their choice and move the other way. No, it's a good session. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.